Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. With the upcoming changes to the economy that are occurring in update 11.6, I thought it would be pretty apt to make a best of the best top 5 money making premium ships list. As going into this economy, it's going to be a little bit tougher to secure large amounts of credits, especially if you have a one-off game where you don't do that fantastic. So, the ships in this list are the best of the best when it comes to money making in my opinion. Uh, also, all these ships are available right now. That was one requirement to be on this list. You should be able to go into the armory or into the premium shop and pick up these ships. So, we're not including ships like the OG Missouri, Enterprise, Musashi. Any of those removed premiums aren't allowed on this list. Again, these are ships you can go into the armory right now and pick up. But before we get into that, I just want to give you guys a little sneak peek at the upcoming Hunt for Bismarck cinematic video that we are working on right now. This is going to be a fully narrated, no more text on screen like the previous three videos that we've done, cinematic recreation of the Hunt for Bismarck. If you don't care, if you don't want to see the trailer, just check out the timeline down below. This video is broken up into chapters, so you can go ahead and jump ahead to the start of the video. But anyway, here's that real quick, then we'll get into the list. All right, so coming in at number five, we have the tier eight premium German light cruiser, the Mainz. Mainz is a cruiser that st stood the test of time. The ship came out, I think, almost two years ago at this point. But yes, this is a German light cruiser armed with 12 150 millimeter guns with German HE, and the Germans get that special one fourth overmatch value when it comes to, well, one-fourth penetration value when it comes to HE, which means you don't need IFHE on the ship to get done what you need to get done. So you get 12 very rapid-firing 150mm guns, especially for Tier 8, on a, what is a heavy cruiser hull. So you're also a pretty well-protected cruiser as well, but that does mean that shots that might have overpinned your armor if it was a little bit lighter from battleships do arm on the mites. But that, coupled with the guns on this ship, make this ship a fantastic ship for absolutely farming down just about anything that gets in its way. The guns have good velocity, the shell arcs are really flat too, so dealing with DDs isn't a problem, nor dealing with other light cruisers. Even dealing with higher tier DDs and cruisers and battleships isn't too much of an issue for the mines once you get some experience down in it. Not to mention too that having 12 guns that reload in a pretty prompt fashion make this ship a pretty darn good one to throw luchins on 
Although I don't think there exists a bad German ship to throw Luchins on as he just makes everything better. But with his main battery uh, reload skill, I forget what it's called, but it's the skill where once you pop 150, 140 hits on target, you get a boost to your reload time, which 140 hits on target for the Mainz is not a tall order in any way, shape, or form at all. So you get that boost going on top of several other uh, boosts to your, to your reload that you can build into, like Fearless Brawler, and you have what is already a very rapidly firing ship, firing even more rapidly with all that. Not to mention, too, she gets Torps on top of that, the standard German Torps, uh, two sets per side, and she has pretty good AA. When she was released, she had great AA, but of course, with how things are going now, of course, that hasn't gone as well, well, hasn't kept up as well as the rest of the ship, but she is still one of the better tier 8 AA cruisers out there. Is she an AA barge? No, but she will definitely make CVs think once or twice about approaching her. And of course she gets all the other German goodies as well, like Hydroacoustic Search and Torpedoes like I already mentioned. Alright, going on down to number 4, we have the tier 9 Premium American Monstrosity, the Gear Sarge! Man, this ship is proving to be just such a... I don't know if it's a, disappoint, uh, a disappointment that it's doing so well because of its... Again, just look at this thing. <laughs> it's a battleship with a flight deck in the middle of it. But yeah, this ship... I remember the ship got got announced. I, I, I couldn't believe that they were actually going full bore into the hybrids like this. Uh, this ship got announced, I think, literally like a week or two after the Issei was released, the hybrid Japanese battleship which at least was historical this is some monstrosity that was designed actually for the soviet union but they decided not to pick it up i can't imagine why but anyway it is in the game in the tier 9 spot for the americans and yeah this thing is great at just performing consistently well because you've got not only 12 16 inch guns at tier 9 which is an insane amount of firepower you don't get that type of firepower in the american line until you get to the montana which is at tier 10 but it also has obviously the giant flight deck in the middle that can launch aircraft five fighters that have tiny tim rockets slapped on them which are quite good if you've never well you've probably been on the receiving end of them they're the rockets that the midway gets and yeah they hurt and you get them on this battleship so that enables you to have just great consistency when it comes to damage and the american battleships are already some of the most consistent battleships in the game when it comes to their gun performance and when it comes to the kearsar she's no She's no uh, exemption to that as well. Her guns are very consistent, thanks to the special um, artil artillery plotting room mod that you can slap onto the Kearsarge. It gives you an 11% boost to your dispersion. So you already have 16, oh, it's not 16, 12 16 inch guns that are pretty accurate on top of the planes that enable you to literally fly around and just keep striking whoever it is that you're striking at and get a good consistent income i mean th these planes once you figure out how to aim them correctly it's no issue for them to do 15k plus salvos to whatever it is that they're that they're uh, attacking especially battleships with chunkier superstructures like the germans or the japanese like with the uh, yamato hull or the musashis as you see me bullying here with these planes you can chuck them for 15 16k and start a fire or two then follow that up with 12 16 inch shells yeah now she does have a little bit of downsides too. Her guns are are the 45 caliber, not the 50 caliber. So the shells do have the, of course, traditionally slow American of shell velocity. It is a super heavy AP too. That's why they travel through the air so slower combined with the 45 caliber of the gun. So at longer ranges, it is difficult to get shots on target. But from around 15 kilometers in, it's much easier. Don't play this thing like a CV. Don't sit in the back. You're half a CV, but you also half a battleship too. Play it at mid-range. You'll be dunking on some fools. The AP on this on the ship's very nasty against the American super heavy AP shells. You can absolutely delete ships with the with these guns if they don't. If they don't pay attention to where you're at, it's it's no issue to remove half of a BB's HP in one salvo. But yeah, this ship's great for doing damage and in turn great for printing credits as well. She's a tier 9, so she can see super ships. But that's actually good for you if you're wanting to farm credits because you get that boost for doing damage to ships of a higher tier than you. And the Kearsarge is great for doing that. 
All right, going down to number three, we have the Tier 8 Premium Japanese Heavy Cruiser, the Otago. The Otago is one of the best heavy cruisers in the game, one of the best premiums in the game, which of course makes it one of the best money-making ships in the game as well. So what makes the Otago great for printing money? Well, she has one of the most accurate set of guns in the game that fire Japanese HE, which of course has Japanese HE Alpha, which is incredibly high, and also Japanese HE Fire Chance. And the Otago is also, I mean, she's a great cruiser all around. You get her consumment down to 10 kilometers. She has torpedoes that also go out to, well, you actually get her consumment down to 9 kilometers. She has torpedoes that go out to 10 kilometers. In addition to also just being a downright maneuverable ship with an awesome set of guns, it's no issue in the Otago to easily, easily do well over 100k a game. And thanks to the consumment of the Otago, you can pick and choose, absolutely can pick and choose what fights you do and do not want to get into. As long as there's not a CV around, her A was recently buffed a little bit, but she is not an AA ship by any stretch of the imagination. But with that Japanese HE Alpha and that Japanese HE Fire Chance and also the great accuracy of the guns, you can make a battleship stay absolutely miserable in the Otago or make any other cruisers stay absolutely miserable with how good the guns are on this ship. Like I mentioned too, with uh, the boost you get from attacking ships of a higher tier, since this is a tier 8, you can, of course, and you probably will, get thrown into a lot of tier 10 games. And since the Otago is so good at being able to pick and choose who she wants to fight, that means you can see a, a lone tier 10 battleship. You can absolutely just have your way with them if you know what you're doing. Granted, don't slip up in this thing because you will get deleted in one blast. But to kind of compensate for that too, she does have a heal, which is pretty rare even nowadays for tier 8 cruisers to have. But yeah, don't, don't, don't think you're invincible. But with the maneuverability that this ship has, you can definitely uh, waste a lot of the battleship's times that's trying to blap you up. But yeah, this thing can easily farm down a tier 10 battleship if you know what you're doing. I mean, again, with how good the HE is on this ship and how accurate the guns are, it's no issue at all. And since you'll be doing that to tier 10 ships, you get an even bigger economic boost as well. Because I think it's um, from doing damage to a ship that's one tier higher than you, it's like a 0.2 times increase than two tiers higher than you, 0.5. Three tiers higher, if you, higher than you if you get into a fell division. Things like 0.7 at that time. It doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it builds up over time when you're doing, you know, thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of points of damage to ships. It, it does build up. It's not a huge increase, but it's noticeable for sure. All right, going on down to number two, we have the tier nine premium Japanese large cruiser, as they're called now, the Azuma. So again, basically take just about everything that we said with the Otago and apply that to the Azuma. Great Japanese Alpha on the guns. Great Japanese Fire Chance on the guns as well. And this time they're 305mm guns or 310mm guns on the Azuma. This ship is so, so ridiculously easy to just bring in the damage. Now, it is the Azuma hull, which I'm sure all of you by now know what that means. It's, it's incredibly squishy. But you can sit in the back of the ship and just farm and easily get over 100,000 damage a game. Yes, it's not the most thrilling playstyle. Yes, it, it, it is literally camping in the back, which I know not a lot of players are a big fan of. But I mean, hey, if you want to make credits, I'd be lying to you if I said that's not the way to go in the Azuma. Now, the Azuma 2, it's also kind of like the Yammy in the way that you play it. Yammy, you hang back at the beginning of the match, you're sniping. But then toward the end of the match, you push in with the Azuma and the Yami as well. And now you have this high tier, in the Azuma's case, large cruiser with most of its HP intact, pushing uh, pushing ships that are like at half health. So you got that huge advantage to you when you do need to push in in the Azuma. And plus the AP is also good on this ship as well. If something shows you their broadside, absolutely load up AP and just... Citadel the poor thing, or chunk a large portion of its uh, HP pull away. Should AP be your primary ammo choice in the Azuma? No, HE should, but don't f don't forget that you have AP when it comes time to use it. Now, she doesn't get torpedoes, so you do have that drawback, but again, for a tier 9 ship, that's, its main goal is to farm credits. This is absolutely one of the best ships in the game to do that as well. And that brings us down to our number one slot, which is actually two ships. You can probably guess what I'm about to say here. 
Roma and Key with the Kobayashi camels. For this video, I just did some key background footage as I find the key to be the less frustrating ship to play. I would recommend Key over Roma. Roma's guns are pretty aggravating. Key is an um why can't I can I remember the tier eight uh tech line Japanese battleship's name at the moment? It's the Amagi. Good God, the Amagi. Uh, key is an Amagi class, but it, it's also kind of funny because Amagi is the battle cruiser version of the Key. Key's the battleship version of the Amagi. But the Amagi is actually tougher than the key. It's a very strange thing. But whatever we're giving. Anyway, so key has 10 16 inch guns, 410 millimeter 16 inch guns at tier 8, which is a lot of firepower at tier 8. She has 0.1 less Sigma than the Amagi. And she has torpedoes and actually pretty good secondaries. Would I build it for secondaries in today's World of Warships? No, build into the main battery guns, run around with 10, 16 inch guns, and punch everyone's lights out. What really helps the Key or the Roma, which has uh, 9, 15 inch guns, and is a um, Latoro class battleship and has a great hull, great maneuverability, and all that jazz, great concealment. I really like the hull of the Roma. The guns are just a little frustrating because they're less accurate than a shotgun. But what really helps these two ships out is the Kobayashi camo, which is a tier 10 perma camo down at tier 8. So you get all the wonderful boosts that you get at, at tier 10 with the tier 10 perma camo and the 50% cost reduction to an already tiny cost uh, repair cost at tier 8 compared to, compared to tier 10 at tier 8, which means you absolutely just print money. You can have completely mediocre games in the key and the Roma with the Kobayashi camel, and you'll still be close to a million credits. Like, I'm talking about maybe 70 or 80,000 damage on a loss, you'll still be at like 700, 800,000 credits with the key and the Roma with the Kobayashi camel. Now, the important bit is that if you buy this camo before the update, the next update, 11.6, with the economic rework, you get a special version of the permanent economic boost, which is far better than anything you can get on a tier 8 ship once that update goes live. Once that update does go live, this camo's boost will be exactly the same as the other tier 8 uh, permanent economic boost, which is... meh. I mean, it's, it's pretty good, but it's not as good as this boost, but if you get this camo before the update you get an improved version of that boost which is much 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 better and from what i've seen on the pt server performs exceptionally sim uh, similar to the way that this camo per per performs in the current game even in some cases a little bit better so that's what's important about these two ships they're available to get this camo on and if you buy it before the update again you get that special version after the update goes live so that's what's most important to know about those two ships you can also get it on the ashitaka as well but i find it the key and the roma it's a little bit better because tier 8 matchmaking for credit farming is a bit better than tier 7 because the tier 8 ships have a lot more to work with in terms of their performance versus the tier 7 ships and the yamato does also get a kobayashi camo but it's just a normal tier 8 perma camo i'm sorry normal till tier 10 perma camo and isn't worth getting at all in my opinion but anyway guys that's my best of the best money making ships we know what you guys think about that in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel one way to 40,000 subscribers and i can't thank you guys enough for that hope you're all having a wonderful tuesday have a wonderful rest of your week i hope to catch you guys in the next one